All right, guys, uh, those of you here that, that are here for the flashlight class, my name is Marshall. I'm a flashlight addict. Uh, <laughs> got Don here, my buddy. Some of you guys may know him as Sooch on YouTube. Uh, so we're going to hear to talk about how to pick out a flashlight. Because, I mean, you see this giant wall of flashlights behind us. This is maybe a third of our selection. We sell a lot, and we know it's intimidating. Uh, so we decided to give this class, actually, it's Don's idea, and we're recording it. We're going to throw it up on YouTube. Uh, just to help people select stuff. Um, you know, we have the filters on the website where you can go through a lot of this stuff, but a lot of people don't know the right questions to ask. And uh, I want to say thank you to Marietta Pizza Company for giving us the pizza and all our vendors for donating all that stuff for the giveaways. So. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I've noticed when I first came into going here was just the sheer number of flashlights. And any time I've been in here, uh, a lot of people are confused. I mean, it's, it's, it can be confusing unless you kind of have an idea of what you want. Um, I know at Blade Show in particular, because a lot of people have no idea about even going here. So they're just looking, and it's almost like just completely uh, confused. And so I, I thought that it would be a great idea to put together some things. I mean, Marshall is, I mean, he lives flashlights. I mean, that is his one of his passions, and, uh, and one of mine as well. But... He really knows the ins and outs, so I, I just figured it'd be great to kind of give you some some ideas because really uh, there's so many different type flashlights for different purposes, and so that's really what this class or this seminar is going to be about. All right, so the first thing and the biggest thing uh, that we always ask people is, what are you going to use the flashlight for? What's its purpose? Are you trying to carry around something on your keychain? Are you trying to light something up that's 400 yards away? You're trying to do something in the middle. You're trying to light or mount it to a rifle. There's a lot of different uses for flashlights. And answering that first question, why are you buying this? What are you using it for? Will answer a lot of these other questions. So the first thing is, is what's the primary use of this flashlight? You know, I know a lot of people can't afford the $400 flashlights or multiple $400 flashlights. So maybe you just need one flashlight that fits all your purposes. So think about that question first. Why am I buying this? What am I using this for? And that will help take care of pretty much all the rest of these questions. Um, the next one is size. Again, do you want to keep this in your pocket? If you say, yeah, I'm going to be using this as a daily carry kind of thing, and I want to keep this in my pocket, we're going to basically ignore this whole half of the wall. You know, I guess you could throw this in a giant cargo pocket or something like that. Most people don't. If you want to carry it in your pocket, you're down towards that side. So you're down with your single cell lights, your single double A, your single triple A, your single CR123, because they're a lot more pocket friendly. You know, a giant light like this, you can do a lot of things with it, or a medium sized light like this, or the giant lights, you can light up stuff four or five hundred yards away, but do you want to do that? You know, is that something that you want to be able to do on a daily basis? Um, so size is going to be the other big thing that you need to think about. Um, what size you're comfortable with, or what size you can get away with. You know, if you're mounting something to a rifle, we probably don't want to put something like that on there. Although plenty of people have done it. You know, we got plenty of customers that have thrown something like that. We actually have a, uh, a gun mount for this guy right here. So, can you see it? Okay. Uh, this guy right here, we actually have a gun mount for that. So we've had people that have mounted to a rifle. I think it's a little big. You definitely have the capability. Most people are going to stay down towards this end of stuff. Yeah, I think one of the first things that I use a flashlight for is, of course, EDC. I mean, to me, that's one of the most important things. And again, size is extremely important. Something uh, about this small, a lot of people like to even go thinner. I mean, they have them the size of a regular pen. So, you know, there's a lot of different choices. But one of the things you're going to find is that if you start carrying a small flashlight like this in your pocket is... How did I ever do without a flashlight like this? Because, uh, you know, you drop something or what you're looking and searching, a flashlight can really come in handy, whether you're in a car, you're at work, or you're at home. And, um, and especially at night, something that's really small, but really the good thing about most of these flashlights is that they have a lot of power behind them. Uh, we have a, a couple of acre field just right in front of our house right into the woods and I can take this flashlight and shine and it goes all the way down uh, into the end of that field and for a really small size. Where'd you get that nice little flashlight? <laughs> From going here. <laughs> uh, so one of the other things is lumens. You know this is also going to be dictated by size. If you're getting something in that size, technology is not quite there yet. You can't get 3,000 lumens. If you're not familiar with the concept of lumens, 
an incandescent light bulb, a 60 watt incandescent light bulb, is about 700 lumens. So that should give you an idea of the kind of output. But it's something like that little guy, that's rated for around 400 lumens. So you can still get some pretty serious output out of a little guy. He's talking about you can light up a field. You can't light up a 50 acre field uh, with something like that. So if you're trying to use this for hunting, or maybe you have a lot of properties, you have a farm, you need to light something up three, 400 yards away, um, something like that's just not gonna do it. That's when you wanna bump up to this, you know, the higher output lights. And we always tell people don't get stuck on the concept of lumens, because again, we'll go back to the whole incandescent light bulb thing. If you took an incandescent light bulb out into the middle of the field and lit it up, how far is that gonna go? Not very far. It's not gonna go very far at all. Uh, a lot of the beam distance is gonna be dictated by uh, the reflector and the optics and all the other kind of stuff in addition to the LED and the output. So when you see lumens, that can kind of give you an idea that you can get some good distance out of it, uh, but uh, it doesn't always necessarily mean so. Like this little guy right here, my favorite flashlight that we sell, if I can find it, this guy right here, the, the SR Mini. So 2,800 lumens on this guy, uh, it only goes out a couple hundred meters. So, I mean, it's a pure floodlight, so it just lights up a really wide area once, which I find super useful. You know, you're out in the field or in your backyard, you can light all of that up at once with 2,800 lumens. It's a pretty serious amount of output. Well, and I just did a review on that light itself, and man, it I mean, it's really amazing. The, just the wall, in fact, I think they even say it, the wall of light. It just, it doesn't do that pinpoint beam. It's just like this big flood, and uh, really great for, uh, for that kind of stuff. Yeah, just lighting up a huge area at once. Um, so, you know, talking about something that's 2,800 lumens, it can go a couple hundred yards or meters, uh, versus something that's significantly lower output. This guy's around 1,000 lumens, but it's rated for around 600 meters. So just to show you that lumens doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily mean distance, but it'll give you kind of an idea of what the light's going to do when you look at the lumens. Uh, the next thing, beam type. It kind of ties back into what I was just talking about. Do you want to light up a wide area at once, or do you want to light up something at a really long distance? One of the big things that uh, I try to show people in the videos is if you're looking at something like this and you have that super tight focused beam, think about lighting up something on the ground or something close to you, reading something on a map or even a piece of paper like this, you're going to get a really bad tunnel effect. So I mean you're going to get that bright part in the center and then the sides are going to be harder to read. Same thing on the ground. If you're looking on the ground or in the distance, you're going to get a really good bright part in the center and you're still going to have this, what they call the, uh, the spill and it's going to light up a wider area around it. But if you're trying to see a lot at once, maybe you're trying to light up a big tree or trying to light up your backyard or something like that, um, something like this would be more appropriate. So when you look at the beam type, uh, that's another thing to consider is, is the kind of stuff you're going to be lighting up. And one thing about a flashlight like this that does have the beam is that all the areas on the outside, outside of that spill, it's going to be a lot more concentrated. <coughs> you're not going to, you're going to lose your night vision out here. So that's one of the reasons why it's really great to have something, well, in accord to the situation, but one of the reasons why you'd have something that would have a little more of a, a wider area. Uh, for specific, you know, uses, uh, is that you know you're not you're going to light up the whole area so you don't have anything coming in that you're not seeing, whether it's searching or in the defensive room. So the next thing on here we have is, uh, and I forgot to mention in the beginning, we actually have all this on the website. So we have this how to buy a flashlight guide on the website, uh, GoingGear.com, and in the knowledge base, you can see all of this, and we have this all real in depth. Or of course you can watch the video. Um, the is the tint. You know, tint's pretty important to me. I like to be able to see the different colors. If you're out in the woods, and we talk to hunters about this a lot, if you're trying to spot a, a hog or a, or a deer, or not a deer is a bad example because you're not supposed to be shooting those at night, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything where you're trying to coyote. differentiate coyote, there you go, hogs and coyotes, and, and you're allowed to shoot those at night, right? Cats. Yeah. Yeah. Cats. <laughs> don't, don't get me in trouble. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to differentiate colors, so uh, there's what's called the CRI scale, and if you think of 100 as sunlight, uh, most cool white LEDs are around 60. So you're only going to see about 60% of the colors that you see with sunlight. Greens and browns get kind of washed out. Um, you're trying to differentiate between colors. It's a little bit harder to do with the cool white. So that's when you start talking about your neutral white and your high CRI. Uh, that little light that Don has is a, is a neutral white light. The one I carry in my pocket is a neutral white. And they just make green and browns actually look green and brown. So you can kind of see the difference 
between the lights that we were looking at before about how the browns actually start popping and showing up a little bit better um, versus the, the straight cool white where it washes things out a little bit. So if color is important to you, you know, photographers or people just trying to differenti differentiate different colors, uh, tint is definitely something worth thinking about. Do you care about tint at all? I don't care about right. tint at all. <laughs> home inspectors, too. Yeah. Home inspectors, that's a good point. Uh, we have a lot of home inspectors that come in here and they buy lights, you know, telling uh, between mold and not mold or wet spots and things like that. The higher CRI helps you differentiate between those different things a little bit better. Um, there is one drawback is the higher CRI you get, the lower the output is. Um, because uh, the way I understand it is they actually put more of a coating on the LED so that more coating will decrease the output. So that's just something to consider. But uh, I think it's worth it. Some people, some people don't. Um, it's just personal preference, totally. Next thing on there we have is uh, switch type. And again, when I was talking earlier about when you think about how you're using the light, a lot of that's going to dictate the rest of these questions. You know, we have a lot of uh, police officer customers. We've got a couple here in the store. And uh, you know, if they're using it with a handgun, if, if, if they're not using the weapon-mounted lights, or uh, if you're using it for everyday carry, you know, that's going to kind of dictate what kind of switch you want. So I mean, if you're using it with a handgun, you don't necessarily want something where the switch is on the side. You're going to be activating it with your pinky. Uh, otherwise, if you're using it for everyday carry, you're going to be generally carrying it like this. So side switches are kind of nice. So you think about how you're going to be carrying it, the natural position about how you're going to be carrying it. I personally like side switch lights. I find them useful. It's easy to kind of go like that. You know, otherwise, you're going to be holding the light like that. I just don't find that comfortable. It's all about personal preference. What do you prefer? Well, I think your, your, head, your head on is the, the big thing for a tactical light or a defensive light. And one of the things that, uh, that's really important to understand, and this is going to get off just a little bit, but your, your light is your number one security tool. And I've said that a number of times in the video. You're going to use a flashlight more than you're going to use any other tool. Uh, you know, you may be armed, but you don't always have your guns sticking out in the yard and hear noise. So making sure that you invest in a good light really is number one. Secondly, a great thing about a defensive tool is that this can be used as a defensive tool. Now this one's a pretty aggressive crinulated bezel here, but this can definitely, especially if you're in a place where you can't carry a knife or a handgun, uh, this will give you a, a non-lethal option, but it's really great to be able to get this and use it for an impact tool uh, or to get somebody off of you, and, and it just gives you an advantage. So you know, consider that as you look at it, but you're definitely right. With a firearm, you definitely have that rear uh, tail switch, that's really important to have that. And uh, that way you can use it however you decide to use it. People use them in different places. And I've talked to a lot of professionals. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to carry these. But tail switch is, to me, number one. So you have all that stuff figured out. What's the last thing? Maybe something that should be higher up is price range. Now, how much are you willing to spend on this? We understand that price is important to a lot of people. You know, maybe the little $20 pocket light is, is what you can get, and that's fine. You know, as long as you have a lighting tool where you can actually look around and find stuff at night. It actually goes back to the point where you're talking about how much you, you think about how you use it. People always ask, why do you carry a flashlight on a daily basis? Because like, it always gets dark. It's always going to be dark at some point. You know, even just looking around in the back of the store where, you know, in the, in the warehouse where we, we have not that great of lighting in between the shelving, it's nice to have a flashlight just to be able to see stuff better or not waking my kids up at night, use a flashlight. And uh, you know, people start thinking about that and they're like, oh wait, I already do all of that. I just use my cell phone or I use, you know, something like that. So imagine if you had something nice to do that with. You can actually light things up well. You can start lighting stuff up at a longer distance, uh, have the higher CRI and all that. So. I think, obviously, that flashlights are an important thing to carry around, an important thing to have on you. Uh, but anyway, yeah, price range. We understand that not everybody can go for the three or $400 lights. Uh, so we try to have the wide array of, of different options for you, for you to uh, kind of choose uh, the different options. So yeah, that's it. We uh, hope this was helpful. And uh, we'll throw this up on YouTube. So if you ever have any questions about it, you can take a look at that. And we have this the whole guide online in our knowledge base as well. Do you have anything else you want to add? Well, there is one thing I would like to add as far as how many flashlights do you really need? And hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Marshall. But the one thing, yeah, batteries are good. Uh, the, the one thing that I think that 
to me, and this is the way I kind of set up my flashlight um, collection or whatever I use, is I have my EDC light. And of course, I, I was showing you that small little S10 O light. Uh, I like to have a good security light that can be also used as a weapons light. And so that I can attach to a rifle. Of course, now if you're going to do it to a pistol, that's a whole different deal. But something that I can use for both. And that's the one that gives me a little more oomph. It may have a crenulated bezel. I can use it for a security tool. Uh, then there is a larger flashlight that you'd use more for search and rescue if you really needed to get some light out there. Uh, a lot of these smaller lights, um, even these medium sized lights would be a security light. Also double is a good search light, but if you really want something a little bit larger, if you're going to be outdoors a lot, it would be good to go with some of these larger flashlights on the end. You know, investing in that, because guys, dark, in the dark, is where most crime happens, and then when you're in an uh, outdoor setting, if you're hiking, camping, hunting, fishing, having a really good flashlight and having the capability to really jump it up there. Now, one thing that I will mention is, on some of these defensive lights, getting a real high lumen light in, inside your home is one thing, outside is another. So if you're going to have an 800 lumen flashlight and you shine that on the wall, it's going to blind you. And so and it's going to, it's going to uh, affect your night vision. So it's really important to gauge if you want your high lumens or at least have your setting down on your security light. And of course all of these will have different settings and different features. Some of us, like me, like it simple, because I'm kind of simple. So, like Marshall, he loves to get into all the intricacies. So, you know, he wants to, you know, have three different, you know, settings for each mode. And he wants to be able to program it and all that. That, to me, almost drives me crazy. So, you know, it's really good to be able to have, to me, EDC, have a good security, tactical flashlight, and then have something bigger for search and rescue. Because, really, I mean, like for me, we have kids... If something were to happen, I really need to get some light out there. It's worth the investment. Or if you're at the lake, and or you're camping or hiking, and you really need to get some light out there, that would be worth its weight in gold. So, just a couple. Those are the three to me primary instances or uses. Another kind of secondary uh, consideration that, that Casey mentioned is uh, batteries. Um, for most customers, we recommend lithium batteries or lithium-ion batteries because you can get a higher output, a lot of times longer run time and a smaller size. So that little guy that, that Don has is around 400 lumens. The one I carry, a little spark light, is around 400 lumens. Uh, the equivalent AA lights are around 200 lumens. So AA's are super common. You can find them pretty much anywhere in the world, which is a really big advantage of them. We've had some customers that have gone and done uh, like the Doctors Without Borders thing in Africa and uh, lithium batteries aren't very easy to find in some parts of the world. So that's definitely a consideration. For pretty much everybody, lithium and lithium ion are good to go. Because the lithium ion are great because you can recharge them, you get high output, long battery life and everything. That's what I use in most of my lights. But uh, there's some parts of the world where it's difficult to get that. So you've got to think about um, where you're going to be using the light as well. Another thing about light is, uh, with battery life, is that you take your standard CR123, and you, it usually lasts about an hour on turbo setting on a lot of the different just standard flashlights. Some run differently, but it only lasts for that long and then you toss it. Now you can't get the rechargeables, but this sitting in a drawer will last 10 years. So these are great to store. And then to me, the 18650s, which would be the size of two of these, you can recharge them. And so typically what I do is I have a backup. In fact, right now I have a backup of the 123s for one of my larger flashlights, like this size, and I'll have 18650 in it that has the rechargeable capability, and I can pull that one out, and if it runs out, I can throw in a couple of my CR123s. Again, 10-year shelf life. I don't have to worry about this thing. I can store it. So there's some advantages to both. And obviously, the, um, you know, your AAA, AA's, that definitely has some advantages uh, because it, you can find those anywhere. So I even have, there's one of the flashlights, uh, in fact, there's probably a, a couple of different ones where you can do a convertible, where you have CR123 or 18650, and you can put a sleeve in it and have trip double A's. And uh, that's just another kind of option that's out there, so. Good. Anybody have, anybody have any going, questions? I might just keep talking, <laughs> so yeah. We can talk, for flashlights for, talk about flashlights for a long time. Anybody have any questions? Buddy, this at all? Yes, sir. What do you carry? What do I carry? A Spark SF3. 
Uh, this is an S10 Olight, um, and I, you know, I, I do carry this a lot. It's the titanium version. So, um, but this would not be if I was really going out somewhere with the family. I would probably upgrade to something with a crenulated bezel, uh, like the M18 Maverick with that striker bezel. Yeah, just like this that Casey's got. So huh? You can. Well, we're going to be getting a bezel for this one. So. Uh, <laughs> But you know, using this as an impact tool, I'm telling you guys, you know, when you can't carry your pocket knife, you can't carry your handgun. Uh, you need something, something. Yes, sir. Talk about using a bezel as a defensive weapon. What about using the light itself as a defensive weapon? We know you don't want to shine it at someone, but you're in a defensive position, shining it in somebody's eyes to give you time to retreat. Bad, good. Uh, anything you can do to disorient. In fact, uh, there was a guy talking to me earlier that said a guy came up to him trying to panhandle, and when he said he'd buy him dinner, and he said, no, I want money, and he kind of started kind of being aggressive toward he and his family, he said he took his flashlight and he put it on strobe, and the guy started doing this, you know. So, uh, it, and of course, it's according to the determination of the attacker. So I definitely think that, you know, we all, we, we all don't, we don't want to go into violence. Nobody wants to be in violence unless they're a little bit you know, on the side. So we want to do the, the, the least resistant thing we can do or the least violent thing. And I think a flashlight doing that to get them disoriented and backed off, I think is a good start. Uh, then if you need to go to something a little bit larger, I know years ago, I have a lot of friends of mine that used to carry the mag light they were in law enforcement. They carry one of the big mag light C cell or D cells with like four lights in it. And you hold it like this, and I'm sure you probably tested this, uh, with those batteries in it, and somebody starts messing around and you just clop them upside the head with it. And those lights would pretty much take it. Uh, and I think some of the, that would take a larger flashlight. Uh, one that's beside my bed is this right here. Uh, this is the XT20. 30. XT30. Uh, Claris XT30. It's got a crenulated bezel. It's got some length. It's got incredible brightness. But I'll tell you what, you don't want to be hit upside the head with that. You know, and then of course you could stroke them too. Uh, this would be really great for like around the home, and um, in fact, I, I had one of these stolen, I think, out of my house. So I'm hoping they're using it. <laughs> it Hopefully, up they don't them. come back and use it on you. <laughs> I don't think they might come back. Maybe they turned it, maybe they turned it on and looked directly into the sunlight. There you go. <laughs> maybe. See, there, there have been a lot of studies done. Uh, back to your point, uh, the police have actually determined the effectiveness of stroke. And they say it's usually a few seconds. That it'll give you. But you know that few seconds may be enough for you to just get out of the way or get out of the situation. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of our police and bouncer and security customers say that strobe is extremely effective on drunk people. So, you know, you got a guy at a DUI checkpoint that's, you know, maybe getting a little aggressive. They just, you know, pop him with the strobe for a second and then that's pretty much it. And I'm sure so, drug, drug users would be yeah, effective. Yeah. So, I mean, people that are in an altered state, uh, uh, from what we've been told, it, it works even better. So here are all the goodies that the vendors and vendor reps gave us to give away to customers. I wanted to give them a shout out because it was super cool of them to just give us all this stuff to give away to customers. They definitely didn't have to do it, but uh, they came through for sure. So some of the stuff we have, we have the Chaco t-shirts, Vibram and Keen t-shirts, some Osprey koozies. Sunto gave us a uh, $300 watch, which was really cool of them. Southern Grind gave us a knife and a bunch of their koozies. Little uh, Keen keychains, pretty cool little keychains. Uh, AMK first aid kits and other gear, Hydra Pack bottles, C to Summit really came through. They gave us about $1,000 worth of different stuff. They're all over the table. That was really nice of them. Benchmade gave us a bunch of nice accessories. Olight gave us flashlights. Four Sevens gave us flashlights. Mora gave us some knives. Boker gave us some knives. Got icebreaker socks, a couple of Osprey packs. Ton of stuff was given to us by the vendors. So that was very, very nice of them. So if that's not enough, we put together little goodie bags ourselves for everybody to get when they get the giveaways with a bunch of little items and gift certificates. All right, thanks for listening, guys. And uh, I want to say thank you to Marietta Pizza Company for giving us the pizza and all our vendors for donating all that stuff for the giveaway. So. Thanks, guys.